Hey. The topic I am going to discuss is interventional studies. Interventional studies. Interventional studies. Also known as experimental studies, in which an intervention, such as a treatment or a preventive measure, is tested on humans in a controlled setting. The goal of an interventional study is to determine the safety and efficacy of an intervention, and to identify any potential side effects. Interventional studies can be classified into two main types. Randomized Controlled Trials RCTs, and Non-Randomized Controlled Trials non -RCTs. Randomized Controlled Trials RCTs. In RCTs, participants are randomly divided into two groups, an intervention group receiving the treatment being studied and a control group receiving either a placebo or a standard treatment. Randomized controlled trials RCTs, is considered as the gold standard for determining the safety and efficacy of a treatment. Types of RCT Parallel group RCTs and crossover RCTs Parallel group RCTs In a parallel group RCT, participants are randomly assigned to either the intervention or control groups, and then followed over time to assess the outcome of interest. The primary outcome is typically measured at the end of the study, but secondary outcomes may be measured at various times. Example, a study that compares the efficacy of a new drug with an existing drug in treating a specific condition. Participants are randomly assigned to receive either the new drug or the existing drug. The study's primary outcome evaluates the effectiveness of the two drugs in treating the condition, and secondary outcomes could include patient satisfaction, side effects, and cost. Crossover RCTs In a crossover RCT, each participant receives all of the interventions being studied, but in a different order, which is determined randomly. After each intervention, the participant's outcome of interest is assessed over time. The primary outcome is usually measured at the end of the study, but secondary outcomes may be measured at various times. Example, a study that compares the efficacy of two different physical therapy techniques in treating a specific condition. Participants are randomly assigned to receive one technique first, followed by the other. The study's primary outcome evaluates the effectiveness of the two techniques in treating the condition, and secondary outcomes could include patient satisfaction, side effects, and cost. Advantages of RCTs They provide strong evidence of causality by randomly assigning participants to the intervention or control group. They allow for the comparison of the intervention to a control group, which can be a placebo or an existing treatment. They help control for extraneous variables, factors that are outside of the main scope or purpose, that may affect the outcome. They are generalizable to a larger population. Disadvantages of RCTs They can be expensive to conduct. They can take a long time to complete. They may have ethical considerations, particularly when the intervention being tested is not believed to be superior to the existing treatment. They may not always be able to include diverse population. Non-randomized controlled trials, non-RCTs. Non-randomized controlled trials, non-RCTs, also known as quasi-experimental design, are a type of interventional study design that do not use randomization to assign participants to the intervention or control group. Instead, the researcher chooses how to group participants. For example, a study examining the effect of a new medication on blood pressure can be done through a quasi-experimental design. Instead of randomly assigning patients to either the new medication or placebo groups, researchers use patients currently taking an existing medication for high blood pressure as the before group and those who switch to the new medication as the after group. The study then compares blood pressure readings between the two groups over a specified period to determine the new medication's efficacy compared to the existing medication. Advantages of non-RCTs Easier and requiring less time to implement due to their lack of requirement for randomization. Quasi-experimental studies often reflect real-world scenarios and can provide insight into how interventions would perform in real-world settings. More cost-effective than randomized controlled trials, as they do not require the same level of resources, 
such as large sample sizes and complex experimental design. Disadvantages of non-RCTs Threats to internal validity, such as selection bias, maturation, and history, can often impact the validity of quasi-experimental studies. The generalizability of results from quasi-experimental studies is often restricted as they are based on specific populations and samples. Due to the lack of randomization, controlling for extraneous variables that could affect the outcome can be challenging, leading to uncertain results. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like. Subscribe for more videos and also share with all your pharma mates. Thank you.